Woo! What's going on, guys? Arms Forum coming at you guys today with another video. In today's video, man, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Detroit Lions. And uh, we're going to be talking about how ESPN ranked our Lions. Well, they ranked everybody in the league, all 32 teams. But they ranked us at 28. For the future, by the way. This is for the next three seasons. But they kind of, you know, they put this all together. Got their, got their brains all together, man. And this is what they did. ESPN asked guys like Jeremy Fowler, Lewis Riddick, Seth Walder, and Fields Yates to rank every team 1 through 32. Now, I'm going to say, does the truth hurt here or is it a lot of BS? I think there's a little bit of both going on here. Okay, now they did this grading system, and I'll go over the grading system really quick. They went from 50 to 100, 50 being the worst, 50 and below actually, uh, given a grade of F, disastrous, their words. 60, very bad, a D grade. 70, average, C grade. 80, very good, a B grade. 90, great, solid A. And then 100, at it called Elite and given it an A+. Plus. Now, obviously, they did our team. I'm just going to really talk about our team a little bit. Uh, I'll throw a couple other teams in here, but I'm going to basically hit on the Lions. Now, basically uses these five categories to determine their rankings, okay? Like I said, 50 and below to 100. Now, five categories. This is what they did. One, the overall roster. And this is for a three-year deal three year season what they think is going to happen in the future so overall roster minus the quarterback a grade of 70.5 puts us at an average a c 28th in the league quarterback now they think this is what our quarterback situation is going to be like for the next three seasons 65.5 which puts us at very bad a d grade 28th in the league Three, coaching, 73.3, an average, C grade, 25th in the league. So they don't think we're going to get any good coaches, obviously, or quarterbacks. Then the draft, number four, 82.8, finally something nice, which gives us a very good, it gives us a solid B grade, puts us at number seven in the league. Then the front office, this is kind of bugs me, this one bugs me a, a little they give us a grade of a score of 78, and then that's obviously a C, probably a C plus, I'm guessing. And then 21st in the league. I thought it should be a little bit better than that, but it still is kind of young. Brad Holmes being kind of like a new GM, even though he's been in the NFL as an office guy for quite some time now, back in LA. But, but but that's okay, whatever they had to do. So that gives us an overall score of 73. So it puts the Detroit Lions at 28th, giving us an average team, a C for the next three seasons. Now teams like the Giants are at 29. Those are my Giants. I just can't have anything nice. And then there's um, the Bears at 30. Yes. I like that a lot. Get out of here, Bears. And then the Panthers at 31. And then the Falcons at 32. Notice a little trend here. With, with, with these teams, Giants, they don't like their quarterback. Bears, quarterback situation's up in the air. Panthers, quarterback situation, what's going on here? Falcons, 32. Mariota, they drafted Desmond Ritter. So a lot of these guys focus heavily on the quarterback. I think a little bit too much, to tell you the truth. So those guys are all behind the Lions. And the teams that I thought were ahead of the Lions, well, that are ahead of the Lions, teams like the Texans are at 27. I was like, okay, I don't really know how good they're going to be in the future. Jaguars at 26. That hurts. Jets at 21. I think that was way too high for them. And then the Seahawks at 24. The Seahawks, I think, are plummeting. I think that's going to be a team that's going to plummet. Russell Wilson's gone. Bobby Wagner's gone. I can see guys like Metcalf or maybe Tyler Lockett jumping ship anytime now, but who really knows? That team's kind of falling apart. Pete Carroll, I don't think we'll be coaching that team in the near future. He is an older guy. He is an older man. So, But that team's falling apart, the, the Seahawks. And we all know it. But I think, they're, I think they're just kind of ranked because they have been so good 
for the past so-and-so years, but they are falling apart. Now, there's definitely a buzz in the air with the Detroit Lions, man. There's definitely a buzz. We see what's going on with our Lions, with our draft, adding a really, adding pieces like Hutchinson, Pascal, Kirby Joseph, even Malcolm Rodriguez. You can throw Chase Lucas in there in the seventh round. Heavy defense, trying to improve what was a absolute dis- disastrous 2021 defensively wise. And then adding a guy like J- Jameson Williams from Alabama, the wide receiver, a speed demon, was going to be very hard to cover. Adding him as well too. So that's the buzz there. We we all know about the buzz, and I actually think it's a bit a bit unfair to guys like Goff and even Dan Campbell to kind of give that grade because they really they really roasted the quarterback here, and I, and I think they roasted Dan Campbell a little bit too. Even though Dan Campbell hasn't won him any games, I, I think he's a little bit better than 25th in the league, and I think Jared Goff is a little bit better than 28. But it, it's actually not just Jared Goff and Dan Campbell. It's kind of it's Goff and the future. So you, you kind of have to add, you know, not just Jared. It could be who's the quarterback in 2023, who's the quarterback in 2024, who's the coach, so on and so on. So it's not just those two, but I think those two guys are kind of thrown under the bus a little bit. And that's whatever. That's ESPN. That's for Jeremy Fowler, Lewis Riddick, Seth Walder, and Fields Yates to answer. Not me. Now, if this team wants to improve these rankings over the years, this is what they need to do, man. This is what this is just my opinion. This is what they need to do. One, you need to win more than three games a year. We all know what 2021 was. It was a year that was kind of thrown under the table. A forgotten year. Coming off of, you know, Patricia won what? The year before he won five or six games. I thought we would have won more than three games, though. Three, 13, and one, I never would have called it. I didn't think we were going to go 11 and six, but I didn't think we were going to go three, 13, and one. But you need to win more than three games. They need to double what they did last year, this year. And six is probably not even, six is probably not even acceptable. But they need to at least double it, in my opinion. I think they need to. I think they need to get to six to nine, to be okay. The future looks better. And if they don't, then there's problems. Then there's talks about Dan Campbell. Is he the guy? There will be talks. There will be talks if Jared Goff is the quarterback here. There will be talks if they need to draft a guy. That's simple. Not even a question. The 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 it will be screamed from the rooftops. Questions. Two, get consistent, and I'm going to use air quotes here, consistent quarterback play. Now, you guys know how I feel about the quarterback situation here. I'm 50-50 on Goff. I'm not going to put it all on Goff because it's not fair to do so. But they've added some things for him. The line is supposed to be ready to go. I, I'm still petrified about this defense. We'll get into that too. But Goff needs to be consistent, and the quarterbacks of the future need to be consistent. But it's not just about them, it's about everybody else, but you need quarterback consistent play. You need that. You at least need that to show that you're improving. And that comes with time. Goff needs to do it this year, though, and it needs to just continue 2023, 2024 down the line. That's what it needs to do. It really does. And if, and if not, then we're just, you know, what are we doing here, man? It's, a, it, 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 it's like a damn Ferris wheel. We don't know who to pick. Like, who's next? Who's coming down the Ferris wheel? Is, who, who's the next guy? I don't want that. I want Goff to latch on to this damn team and call it his own. That's what I want. Be consistent, Jared Goff. Be consistent, future quarterback for Detroit Lions. Whoever the hell it is. Three. Fill this roster out better. It needs to be filled out better. Yes, I know it takes some time. But there's holes still across this team. Especially in the defense department. Especially. You got guys in, that, on this, in this linebacker room that don't deserve to be starters. To tell you the truth. 
Not one of them. Alex Anzalone is not a starter in the NFL. He's not. He's a decent linebacker that'll make a couple plays. But you put him on any other team, he's a backup. He might have started some games in, in New Orleans, but I guarantee you he wasn't the, their first option. I can guarantee you, with, without even looking at their roster, without even looking at their roster in the past, no way Anzalone was the number one option to start there. He's probably started because of, by default. I'll put, I'll put my, I'll put my house up on it, man. <laughs> I would. I don't, I, you know, he's just, and he's our best linebacker. People love this Malcolm Rodriguez type hype. I love the kid too, but temper your expectations on this guy. Chris Board, Derek Barnes, all guys that are developmental linebackers. Guys that need to be developed. Because Barnes is not, even Rodriguez isn't, and I don't know what's going on with Chris Board. Right now, he's our number two, as of right now. He, 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 looked, one of, uh, he looked like one of the best linebackers out there during, during these... Uh, OTAs and mini camps. We'll see more as we go along with this uh, training camp coming up right around the corner. But that's how bad our linebacker room is. It's terrible. And then you have a secondary with so many holes, I don't even know where to begin. Jeff Okuda hurt. He's back though. Can he prove that he's the number three overall pick? I just want this kid to stay healthy, to tell you the truth. Damn being a number three pick. Stay healthy for 17 games. I want to see him stay healthy. I don't want to see him get burned for 17 games, but I want to see if the kid can stay healthy and contribute a little. You got Jerry Jacobs, who has an ACL that's literally made out of tissue paper because he got hurt back in college. They had an ACL in college. That's why he probably wasn't drafted, and he hurt it his rookie season. He went undrafted. He came here, though. He played well until he got hurt, but he's, he's very injury-prone. Go look at his college tape. Go look at his college days. He, that's his thing. And then over Warrior, love him to death. Can he duplicate what he did last year? Can he get six, seven, eight picks? Because he was our only playmaker in the secondary. Only. And that's the truth. And he got burned a lot. But he was our best playmaking DB. And then, you have the D and then you have the safeties. You have Tracy Walker. You guys all know how I feel about him. I like Tracy Walker. I don't think they overpaid for him. I, I, I was kind of glad that they paid what they paid him. I was a little bit worried they were going to give him more money. He took a discount. He did. But this new regime is smart. They weren't going to pay him top flight safety money. But I like Tracy Walker. But he worries me too. He's not the best safety out there. But he's the best safety we got. And then we picked up Deshaun Elliott, who rolls out of bed and hurts himself. Hurts himself brushing his teeth, this kid. He's out here running his gums, saying that they're going to know who he is this year. Well, you know what, bro? It better not be because you're on the IR. It better not be because you're on the pup. And I like Deshaun Elliott. I like him a lot. I think, he, I think he plays with his hair on fire. But he needs to stay healthy. And then after that, you got Kirby Joseph, another guy that needs a lot of developing, a guy that started one year in college at Illinois. One year. And people think he's the next Ed Reed coming into this town, that, that he's going to light it up year one. I like Kirby Joseph, but again, temper your expectations for kids like this. You have to. But they need to improve on, on this. They're not done in this secondary. They're not done. And then after that, I, after, you know, I don't even know who. Like, you got Will Harris at corner. You got, can I have, can, can Melifonwu step up? So many question marks in this secondary. So many. I, I, I like some of the guys, but my God, there's a ton of question marks. I like the future of this team. I really do. They need to improve so much though. And then number four, Dan Campbell is the last thing that I'm, I'm really going to say probably. Who knows? C number one, win more games. 
Now, no, it's not all on Dan Campbell. We all know what Dan Campbell is. He's not the type of he's not the type of guy that he's not an X's and O's type coach. But nobody he is. He's a player's coach. He's a guy that can lead. He's a guy that everybody loves and respects. Except for ESPN. They obviously think that he's some Neanderthal. Which I don't think he is. I think he's very, very football. Or like very football minded. More than people seem to see. I think. You know. We're going to see I think a little bit more. in his hard knocks coming up. He's just the way he leads. That's, that's his thing. He's not an X's and O's guy. He's just, but he needs to win more games. And like I said, C number one, win more than three games. Even though it's not all on Dan Campbell, but he's the guy that makes the ultimate decisions. Dan Campbell, the head coach, is the guy that makes the ultimate decisions on the field. So there's lots of things I like about this team. There is. But don't get too fired up about the 28th ranking because... There is so many question marks on this team. And I hope every single piece that we have added through the draft, free agency, coaching, top to bottom, shows out. They're going to have to prove that they're not 28th anymore. Prove it. That's it. You just have to prove it. There's lots to be proven. And I think it's going to be a work in progress. I think we're going to see some of it this year. I hope 2023 is the better year. I'm not writing off 2022. Don't get me wrong. I just still think that we're building. And I think year three is going to be the ultimate, ultimate build number. Where they add to the, where they stockpile players. Just, just my opinion. So that's it, guys. ESPN ranks us at 28 for the next three years. They're pretty much swiping us under the rug. Do you, do you believe it? Do you think it's the truth? Is it BS? What's going on? But thanks, guys. Thanks for the video. Thanks for, for tuning in, chiming in, uh, paying attention. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button in the bottom right. Don't forget to hit the notification bell, get all my videos. And don't forget to like and comment. And uh, we'll talk about it. What do you think about this ranking, man? You know, I. I I'm trying my best here. Trying my best here. Go Lions. One pride. Let's go, baby. Boom.